So I spent a lot of time, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, going through caloric kind of restriction because I just felt like there was nothing I can eat. And you know what? I never felt like I was really getting better because I was constantly kind of restricting a whole host of foods that were ultimately actually going to be the ones that healed my gut. Now there's research saying that that's the way to do it. And in the past, like, 15-ish years, right, where I've really, 15, 20 years, I've really added more foods in, I can honestly say that I feel way better so it's not all about taking foods out. Yes, you have to identify what your individualized triggers are, but there's never a list of 20 foods. There's a list of maybe two to three. And with IBD, it doesn't necessarily mean you can never have them. It's really load based. It's how frequently or how often you have it. And as soon as you become less restrictive, it really helps this brain gut connection because you don't feel that anxiety surrounding food. So restrictive diets are definitely widespread. Okay, especially in terms of IBD, um, but it's not just with that. It's with, you know, the specific carbohydrate diet that I've talked about, take out all the carbs and something like keto. And there were some great questions about that as well that we'll talk about, but it's restrictive diets don't ultimately heal your gut, right? And creates almost more fear and anxiety towards food. It's how you actually move beyond that. So yeah, if you're looking at weight loss and you're on steroids and you're like, oh, my weight's kind of kind of creeping up, like I have to make sure I control it. Some you have to look at how much you're eating, but it doesn't have to be restrictive, right? Um, you can still incorporate some foods in because ultimately it leads to more issues in terms of your metabolism long term anyway.